Good morning, it's Thursday, May 11, and today I'm going to do a hodgepodge. I'm going to talk about several items that have come up that are critical in some way, shape, or form, but they're not overpowering in a sense that I can devote the whole time to them because then none of these things have really ended in a sense, right? So the first thing I want to mention is that it's May 11th and Title 42 is ending today. And that means there's going to be a continuing crisis at the border. And the crisis at the border is that more and more immigrants are going to show up there and try to get into this country. And I don't blame them one bit for trying to get into this country because this is really a great country. And I say that with some reservations because you know that I have ranted about the situation within this country many, many times. But it's still probably better than most of the countries on the face of the earth. So I can't blame those people for trying to get into this country because they are coming from countries that are nowhere near the level of civilization that exists in this country, even though the level of civilization in this country has spiraled severely downhill over the past couple of years. So I leave you with that. Title 42 is ending. We don't have an answer in immigration and there will be hundreds of thousands of people at the border and who knows how that's going to end and I don't think they have a scintilla in their mind of a solution at all. So that's the first thing. The second thing is George Santos. George Santos is going to face federal criminal charges. That's right. Federal prosecutors have filed criminal charges against this representative that I'm sorry to say comes from Long Island. And George Santos has admitted that he lied and told all kinds of fabrications during his campaign for the for his congressional office. His lies were so huge that even politicians were against him. And that's something that's hard to do, to get politicians to admit that another one of them is lying. But George is a liar, a first-class liar. And the problem there is that he won't give up his seat in Congress. And they're not going to suspend him or put him out of action in Congress because the Republicans are desperate to hang on to that seat because they need his vote to pass things to maintain their slim majority. So that's the biggest disgrace in this whole thing. He has admitted to all his falsehoods, but nobody's going to take action on him because they need his vote. They need his vote to continue keeping this country on edge. Now, we haven't learned exactly what the charges are, but the FBI and the Justice Department are examining all sorts of allegations of false statements in Santos' campaign finance filings and other claims. I don't know what's the big problem. The man has admitted he lied. So why is it taking so long? He admits to being a liar. He admits he didn't graduate from Baruch Collins. He admits several other things. But I think what's troubling them is they can't pin him down on how he got the funds to run for office. Where did his money come from? That's what they're trying to figure out. I think they're searching to find a scam, some deal, something that he did that generated this money on false pretenses. That would be a major crime. Lying is not such a big deal. And that brings me 
to the meeting that Biden had with McCarthy and several other high-level congressional and senatorial people. And McCarthy described the meeting as lacking movement. And that's a very polite way of saying they didn't get any shit done because they are not prepared to compromise. Neither one of them. Neither side wants to give an inch. And some of these inches are really feet and yards apart. You know, some of the things that the Republicans want are outrageous, and some of the things that Biden wants to protect us from are also idiotic. So anyhow, Biden is going on the road, and he's going to attack Republicans for adopting a bill last month that couples an increase in the debt ceiling with massive spending cuts and other policies, including a repeal to programs that combat climate change and cancel student loans. So the president and his top aides believe that the GOP approach threatens to decimate federal health care, education, science, labor, and health programs, harming American families, taking finance away from American families. Those are strong things. And I believe that Biden is partially correct in some of the things that he's saying about what the Republicans are trying to do. But in any event, we need to get this thing settled because we can't have a country on the verge of a default. So they've got to come to grips with this. But on the other hand, the Republicans shouldn't be messing around with things that affect education and science and health programs. Anything that harms the future of American families is a no-no in my mind. But we've seen in the past the Republicans' agendas towards social services and things like that have not been very progressive. So that's what Biden is taking a stance on, protecting American families. And then, of course, we have the verdict in the court case that was brought by the writer E. Jean Carroll against the former president Donald J. Trump. Now, she accused him of rape, but he did not convict, get convicted on rape charges. He got convicted on sexual abuse and defamation. And he was ordered to pay $5 million to Miss Carroll. And, of course, he said the verdict was false, he was innocent, but his actions during this case were not the actions of an innocent man. He refused to come to court and testify on his own behalf. He has chosen to fight in the social media arena against this case. And so he lost, and he owes five million dollars now. And of course he's going to appeal. But nevertheless, he got off cheap in my mind because he wasn't convicted of rape. And that's probably why he didn't come into the court and testify because if the attorneys had gotten their hands on him in court and made him speak, he might have been convicted of rape. So I leave you with that this morning. A former president who was further disgraced but still on the campaign trail. Have a great day. Bye.